is back once again and i'm so excited to see uh how it goes because this is a completely new series apparently um so i'm really really excited to see what they have in store for us um it's called the Od oddity Compen compiendum i could never ever say that last word i can never say it um so yeah just i'm just i'm really excited it's a 13 minute long video i can't remember how long that is comparing to the boiled one i think if i remember correctly the boiled one's like 10 minutes yeah roughly so this is the longest one of the lot so far um i'm really excited to see how this goes because i haven't seen anything of it um so we're gonna see what happens in this video is it gonna be creepy i hope so is it gonna be scary probably is it gonna be disturbing most definitely so let's get straight into this this is the oddity compiendum installment one uh, let's get straight into it i've heard good things though apparently oh that's the oh my god no way that's the that was the old profile picture Okay. The following information has been acquired from realities that may be separate from the one you are currently residing in. Please be aware that knowledge or comprehension of incompatible information may result in a conscious reality fracture. At the boiled one? I wonder if this has any correlation to the boiled one at all. I'd be curious to see if it has anything to do with it. Because I genuinely don't know if it's going to have anything to do with the boiled one or it's going to be something completely separate. What will we learn today? That's the boiled one trumpets, right? They're the boiled one trumpets, I'm pretty sure. Contagious disease. I don't know where you get a rush of brain until he is turned back immediately. Enlightenment is a drug. Interesting. Flesh beds. It's a parasite? Oh, that's this thing. They were first discovered in the late 1960s when a mattress company was surveying excess storage. Upon finding many seemingly risky mattresses that had not been sold, they gave them away to thrift shops and people in need. The people who received the mattress spoke initially had no issues with the faux beds. It wasn't until the air began to warm up that these beds awoke from their unique and full hibernations. Okay. Hi, Louise. How are we doing? Um, so what I'm getting from this a lot is definitely Vita Carnes vibes. Definitely Vita Carnes vibes. Um, I mean, it's like it's in introducing all these different entities and these ones being as big as, you know, mattresses for your bed, which is scary as hell. Um, but considering the fact that it can, like, slice you, that that's terrifying. Imagine, like, being killed by your own bed. Like, that's, that's scary, dude. That's so scary. The first recorded victim was 19-year-old Alice Fijer. She had been sleeping on a flesh bed for roughly six months before her sudden disappearance. Okay. After noticing the stench of sulfur and rot originating from her bed, her family called authorities and the inside of the mattress revealed a feasting parasite, several hundred human bones, and a half digested Alice. Ooh. In which mattress folks sustained themselves in oh, it sinks you in. To wake them from their dormant state. Kind of like an egg, but not nearly as tasty. <laughs> So it like sinks you in. Slowly unfold themselves from their soft mattress-like bodies. This process is very gradual and happens underneath its body or on its side so as not to be detected. After roughly a month of this process and on a night 17 degree Fahrenheit or higher, its head and arms fully emerge and pull the sleeping host into its body where prey is slowly digested. No way. Not much is known about how these sleeping beauties came about, but it is theorized that since they are subhuman, they were once a branch of Homo sapiens that merged with the Mazeal network many years ago. Autopsies of flesh beds digested systems have revealed the end. I'm stunned. I'm really I'm stunned on what I'm watching right now. To people born during the 1600s. Another odd thing to note is that the mattress folk themselves contain DNA belonging to humans as well. 
One instance, Cher DNA in a blood type, with Napoleon Bonaparte, leader of the French Republic during the time that the Matress folk were assumed to have come into existence. All in all, huh? it might be a good idea to throw out that mattress that feels just a bit too warm lately. You might be sharing it with something on That's so creepy. Sleep tight, and don't let the dead fight. That's terrifying, dude. That's terrifying. I'm not even gonna pronounce that category. I can't even. Is a subreality nearly identical to Earth save for the fact instead of humans, pale headless corpses remain in their stead. These corpses. Bro, the size of them things. The holes in their necks. What the hell am I looking at? Their hearts have also been observed to begin convulsing at seemingly random intervals. These beings are identical in appearance to one another aside from physical dimensions, which can vary severely between each corpse. The headless sub people dwelling in this pocket reality have been observed changing their behavior when humans have physically interacted with them and apparently gain a level of awareness and vitality when such events occur. There are approximately 2,393 living humans residing in this reality I'm... all from parallel Earth. Every single resident recounts waking up in the headless microcosm after falling asleep under I'm... strange circumstances that... I'm actually stunned on what I'm watching. Like... How this looks and the description of these entity things, dude. Bro. Dude, like, what the hell? Like, what am I looking at? Like, look at this thing. Like, this thing apparently just, like, wanders around. It actually looks a lot like the boiled one in a physical form. But, dude, this is creepy as hell. Back in their own realities. No one back in their own parallel homes remembers their faces or identities, which leads to the belief that this place could be a form of empty reality, a waste compartment of the universe used for aspects of reality that are useless or harmful to existential fabric. The humans that live in the headless macrocosm are assumed to be taking shelter in abandoned structures and banding together to search for plant-based food during the warmer times. Fun fact. That is such. That is cool artwork. That looks real. That looks like. That looks actually like it's there. Despite this subreality being detached from main reality, an incident took place which created a temporary fear between the two. A man residing in the headless macrocosm was walking through. That looks like in a violent nature. I watched in a violent nature last night. That that is that looks like like identical to a scene in in a violent nature. A field with a small house in the center. Upon reaching the house, the man unintentionally brushed up against one of the breathing bodies. This body, just before motionless aside from the labored convulsions, sprang to life and removed the head of the man. It then proceeded to attach a severed head to the stump of its own neck. The man's name was huh. Michael Tang. Huh. Huh. After the corpse had placed Michael's head where its own should be, an event occurred back on Earth in the year 2061 that resulted in governmental intervention. A family's call to the authorities described an impossibly tall naked figure appearing in their backyard. The presence of this oddity was highly distressing to the family, and they remained inside their home until the situation was resolved. The following photograph depicts this figure. That, that, I, I don't think that, that definitely said something else, I think. Yeah, I think it did. That definitely said something else. Did it? I oh, never mind. The face you are looking for no longer exists. That's creepy. Bro, that's so creepy. Oh, that's so creepy. Are we gonna see it? No? Okay. It keeps glitching whenever this Ted for Dudes thing comes up his name. These grieving bodies appear to be in a constant state of yearning to reconnect with the roots of reality what? again, as they have been taken a hold of by a dangerous and contagious disease. This disease appears to be non Hamter just got it, by the way. That's where I recognize the thing from. It looks like the boy in the bath character. That's exactly... I was trying to think of who it looked like. That's exactly who it looks like. At any time, and once it takes hold, the headless macrocosm deems you valid for residence within its endless meadows, filled with fellow patients. But don't worry, it's a rare diagnosis. Cap. Another fun fact. Occasionally, crude man-made structures will form seemingly out of nowhere in order to correspond with the structures on parallel Earth. 
as mentioned earlier, the head was flat recovering itself functions like a digestive tract in the universe. And the Bro, it just has a house moving. It, it's literally Monster House now. now then, check your Bro. Screwed on tight. Great, because you might want to hang on tight to it for this next one. Oh, lovely. Okay. What's the third and final one? Of enlightenment. The obelisks of enlightenment are a collection of monolithic beings that are currently residing in different remote locations across the world. Also known as the fathers of What am I looking at? In groups of one to eight and stand anywhere from ten to one hundred fifty feet tall. Oh, it's like the same height as me. Is levitating just barely above the ground and facing geodetic north. Though most of them reside in remote fields and deserts, they have also been found floating above the ocean within the vicinity of the Bermuda Triangle and even on the moon. On the moon. So slightly and progress approximately two inches forward a year. These obelisks are enlightened in the infinitely vast secrets of the universe and are constantly aqualizing the excess information as a means of ways to counteract the overwhelming integrity. Bro, this is terrifying. Earth being closed and monitored by government entities, many people have wandered into these locations prior claiming to be following the sound of angelic singing. This alluring hum emanating from these obelisks reduces a massive... I'm actually stunned. I've been like shocked to this entire video. Folklore refers to the frequency as the song of the divine contour. Each obelisk's biological elements are unraveled thousands of feet into the sky to make a metaphysical connection from Earth to the universe. It is assumed this is a form of knowledge worship, an attempt to make a mortal sacrifice for an immortal honor. Fun fact, these organs are confirmed to be those of the humans and other biological matter that were absorbed after enlightenment. Upon perceiving the words spoken by the obelisks or entering into close proximity with them, the human brain... This feels like it's tied to something, but I don't know if it's the boiled one or TOE. Because the, the reason why I, I don't know if it's TOE or the boiled one, because TOE had the whole laugh track. But then the boiled one had this more of a vibe, you know? It might not even be connected to either of them, but... There's something going on with this, and I don't know what it is, but there, there's something. There's some weird vibe of this. I don't know what it is. In this knowledge, they are biologically absorbed into the obelisk, becoming wholly unified with the being. It is not entirely understood how these anomalies were brought into existence, but they seem to be curious in the fabric of reality akin to black holes. Many speculate that these rifts were opened by ancient giants who were dissatisfied with a lack of Earth's knowledge. Many unnaturally large humanoid skeletons have been found underground adjacent to obelisk sites, further supporting this idea. When the obelisks made their debut on Earth, they ate it in the There's so much lore. Like, like so much lore. The, the lore. There's a lot of it though. This knowledge would help you to rationalize a possible blueprint and method for building these grand tombs, and they were made into the shapes of pyramids as a tribute to the This is fascinating. Like, I've never said that about an analog horror before, I don't think. It's fascinating. Oh, I hate that. I hate the way it opened its eyes. Go on, boiled one. Boiled one. Boiled one. Boiled one. Boiled one. This is Philpus. It is not known where Philpus comes from. No, 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 no. That is like the dude from Little Nightmares 2 on steroids. Nope. No, I'm good. I'm so good. Philbus? We you can keep Philbus. You, you can keep Philbus. He he can he can stay right there with his tongue out. He can he can stay right there. He doesn't have to move. He doesn't do anything. Especially the fact that it says in the corner in Philbus I trust. No. I don't trust him. I don't. I do anything but trust this dude. Why he is here, but there have been a number of people who, after consuming media depicting Philbus, have felt the overwhelming compulsion to practice Philbism. What is that? Is a political and somewhat religious ideology which centered around the belief that building consuming shares and other wooden furniture is honoring Philbus' great sacrifice. It is not clear what this sacrifice is. Look at this. Or what it refers to. Look at this. Philbism. Something, it looks good. Huge improvement from the last, I think, in Philippus I trust. I should not be reading these out loud in case they're gonna evil dead me or something. Attributes and practices of Philippism include learning to build chairs, learning to properly digest chairs, 
promoting slash discussing share consumption on a just casually gonna munch on some chairs just the casual Silvus, who is said to advocate for making furniture consumption a socially accepted and widespread practice there are so many wonderful things about Silvus. consider the body of Silvus and become one with many others today it's a great decision just eat your share to get started. Any mention of Silvism and elaboration on the subject will eventually result in it becoming a sponsorship or advertisement of sorts. We have no idea how to avoid this, sorry. All Silvists will deny the existence of Silvism when directly questioned about it. This video was not in any way sponsored by Silvism. Cap. This is for educational purposes only. Cap. Silvism does not even exist. Yeah, I knew it. There's still enough time left as well. There's still a minute. A brief glimpse at process will now yeah. This purely auditory procedure. Okay, warning for people with bad ears, including myself. This whatever auditory procedure about to play, just a little warning. I don't know what's gonna happen. So, how much on a bet's the boiled one trumpets? I hope it's. No, I'm gonna keep my eyes open actually. Why just the boiled one? That's so creepy. 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 Nah. Nah, that's so creepy. Oh my god. You may now open your eyes. Thank you for complying. Thank you for attending Dr. Nowhere's Office of Wonders. We hope that you enjoyed your stay. I love that it's like almost actually canon. Because that cre Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Because that creature at the start there. That was Dr. Nowhere's, like, profile picture for so long. So it's almost like it's, like, trying to make this take place in, like, actual in-universe, which just makes it ten times scarier. But, dude, that was super impressive. That really did remind me of, like, you know the video of Vita Carnies where it explains all the, um, the stuff, like, the monsters and stuff. But this video took it to, like, a whole different level. The whole thing of, like the the way there's creatures that will take more or less a mental approach with like the enlightenment or whatever the enlightenment or something then you have those the beds that decide to digest you that instantly gives you a vibe of oh wait no can't sleep then there was the other one what was the other one uh yeah the big like headless things that rip off things as head right that yeah those things with the the head you're looking for is um like not here or something like that or not what you expect that's creepy as hell dude that whole thing in general was creepy and then to top it all off when you have the philibus character who was clearly meant to be the main character of this entire episode or series because the way it's like a bonus one and it's like oh this isn't a sponsored thing but all of a sudden the big sponsor comes with a click here click here like it's really clever but it's very clearly like this dude is the main threat i would imagine like not necessarily the main threat because obviously the dudes rip off people's heads i guess but um when it comes to this dude i feel like he's kind of like the main guy but then also the fact that it goes like keep them closed that was creepy as hell that was that was super creepy but overall that was such a good video like honestly um i loved every minute of that i that's like everything you would want in like a next installment of a series or like a like the first video of a new series from a like a known creator purely because it's like it gives you all the vibes of the previous videos that they've created but just takes a twist on them and i like that i really did enjoy it like genuinely there wasn't a creature in there that wouldn't give you the heebie-jeebies you know that's the way that maybe you didn't like maybe it's like oh the dude to take off people's head yeah whatever but uh, like the beds that eat people the philibus character like if there will at least be one creature in there or oddity if they call them that will creep at least someone out so the fact that there is at least one for everyone that will you know you know will creep you out is something 
Um, overall, though, super impressive. That was super, super impressive. I was so happy how that turned out, honestly. Um, but yeah, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on what you thought of it. But genuinely, uh, that was absolutely insane. Like, let me know what you thought of it as well. Um, because I'd be really interested to see what you guys think of it. Because genuinely, I think that was probably one of the better ones on Dr. Nowhere's channel. Um, I don't know where I'd compare it because I love the boiled one and I love TOE, so it's very hard to compare it. But genuinely, that was awesome. I just want to hear from you guys as well because genuinely, I really, really like them. First shot of this episode, Tammy picks this house. Oh, what about that one? Now, if you ask me, that is the, you know, worst house you can pick. It has wallpaper on the outside.